Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and this is just a quick video just to let you know about the Geminid Meteor Shower which uh, peaks this week. So the Geminid Meteor Shower is an annual meteor shower, a bit like the Perseids. If you've heard of the Perseids that happen in August. So every year, mid-December, we get a heightened chance of seeing shooting stars. But we're not actually looking at shooting stars, the stars don't move. But they look like bright stars moving across the sky. They streak across the sky, but what they are mostly is little tiny, tiny grains of cosmic dust. And they come into the atmosphere, and when they do, they burn up. Now, the bigger these dust specks are, let's say that if it was the size of a pea or something like that, that would burn like a fireball. It would look spectacular. And you do get some of those during the Geminid meteor shower. So as the Earth goes around the sun, it passes through certain sections where a comet has been along. And that comet or asteroid, in the case of the Geminids, it's actually an asteroid that's left a dust trail. And every so often, in this time of year, in December, it goes into the trail of this asteroid. It's called 3200 Pathion, I think it's called. I'm just checking the sky now. 3200 Pathion. So that's the asteroid which caused the dust trail, which when the Earth goes into it, the, the, the dust from that comes into the atmosphere. And it looks spectacular, but there is a peak. Now it's active right now, as I'm filming this video, the, the, the meteor shower is active now. We're actually in the dust trail now. So if you were to go out tonight or any night this week, you've got a very good chance, better than normal, of seeing meteors streaking across the sky. I'm just gonna show you some pictures now of what I mean. But yeah, you've got a very good chance of seeing, if you've never seen a shooting star before, I know lots of people probably want to see them, but some people are very lucky. You just so happen to be looking up and you see a very, very bright shooting star. Now, there's loads of them that come into the atmosphere every single night. Now, you won't see most of them because they could happen anywhere. They could be behind you um, or they could be to one side and you won't see them. What you need to do if you want to have a good chance of seeing them is to go out any time this week, preferably on the morning of the 13th and the morning of the 14th. That means after midnight. So there's, there's two nights this week where we have a the, the really where, where we get the peak the actual peak where we're traveling right through the center of this this dust trail which was left by an asteroid and you've got a great chance of seeing meteors flying across the sky and they are spectacular i do um recommend that you try to go somewhere dark if you can travel out somewhere hopefully it's clear enough where you go you know, I mean, I saw loads of them from my back garden and I'm in the middle of Blackpool and I saw some spectacular ones last year. What you need to do is just pick a part of the sky to look at. Look at Orion. Just look towards Orion. And we've got no moon in the way as well. No moon in the way at all this year. So that means even better, we get a better chance because when the moon's around, it brightens the sky up and it does take away from some of the, the fainter meteors. So it's a great like, like a competition, you could go out with someone and you could have a competition. Let's see how many shooting stars we can see. And um, yeah, you can have a little competition like that. And it's great fun. Uh, there might even be a, an event near you. I don't know. We're not having an event. Our Astronomy Society is going with other Astronomy Societies in Lancashire to have a Christmas meal on the peak of the Geminid Meteor Shower on, on Thursday. We're actually having our Christmas... Who arranged to have... The Christmas meal, the inter-society Christmas meal on the peak of the best meteor shower of the year. I do not know, but that's what we're doing. And hopefully I'll get time after that to go out and have a look. If it's clear enough, luckily, you, you might get lucky and it'd be clear. But, but you know, we, we just have to just see what happens, don't we? But I've been to Tenerife a couple of times for the Geminis as well. And I've shown you some, some pictures on there that I took in, in Tenerife. Now, you don't see them... Well, you don't see loads and it's not like a rain of me it doesn't rain down it although that can happen sometimes but what you tend to do is you tend to see so many so if you were to look at one one part of the sky and you were somewhere nice and dark and it was on the peak of the 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 meteor show you could see i reckon you could see around about 20 or so per hour something like that the actual total amount it, that, that they reckon per hour is around about 120, but that's for the whole sky. That's for the whole sky. And that's 
That's assuming that the radiant, where they come from, the radiant of Gemini, the constellation of Gemini, Castor and Pollux, look for those two stars, just to the left of Orion. That's where the, the Gemini meteor goes. That's where they, they radiate from. They come from that direction. If you see a meteor flying across the sky and the radiant of Gemini is behind it, then that was not a Gemini meteor. So they have to come from a certain part of the sky. I'm just going to show you a picture on the screen now, which I took in Tenerife. It was taken with a fisheye. This is a spectacular fireball Gemini meteor. And you can see that streaking right across the sky. Now, it, it, it does arc a little bit, but that's because of the fisheye lens. But that you can trace that arc all the way back to those two stars on the far left-hand side, on the other side of Orion. And those are Castor and Pollux, and those are the heads of Gemini. So that... that Meteor there on that photograph is a good example of how to trace the streak of a meteor back to the radiant of Gemini. So they come from Gemini and that's where they get the name Gemini from. So if you were to go out this week, Thursday morning and Friday morning, I reckon are probably the best times to see them. And if you want to capture them, I could probably go into detail in this video, but I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to another video where I do talk about capturing them with a camera. You want something like this, a wide lens and you want to use manual I would probably say manual put your put your frame advance onto multiple frame advance so that if you put what you can lock the shutter on your camera down set it to 15 seconds set your your focus to infinity use an ISO of around about 3200 to 6400 and use the widest aperture that you've got so this lens here goes down to f 3.5 open your lens up that's the iris inside the lens open it up as wide as it'll go 15 to 20 seconds with as wide a 20 millimeter go as wide as you can open it up do everything set up the camera up i'll go into more detail on another video that i'll put at the end of this one that was for a different meteor shower but it the 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 camera settings are pretty much the same so check that video out at the end i'm going to certainly go out and have a look and see if i can see any because it's really it i tell you what i never get bored of looking for meteors it's absolutely amazing whenever you see one flying across the sky it's spectacular and if you're out there with someone what usually happens is that someone says oh did you see that meteor flying across the sky? and then you turn around and look and by the time you look it's gone because most of them are blinking you'll miss it but you do get the odd fireballs and they can last a few seconds and they look absolutely spectacular and they leave a like a, a trail behind like a glowing trail behind them as well so they are amazing so there you go that's a quick video for you sorry it's not too technical i haven't gone into too much detail about the camera but i will put a link to another video where i go into to show you more about how to set a camera to take pictures and there you go i hope you like this video and uh, don't forget to keep looking up